somebody right now on the far end of the continuum of metabolic health, they're overweight, they're inflamed. For you, is it ketogenic diet all the way for that person to regain metabolic health if they want to pull the biggest lever and get back quickly? Or are there other considerations in that realm? Yes and no. I would say yes in terms of, for most people, efficacy. No in terms of effectiveness per se. So the dis distinction between efficacy and effectiveness, efficacy is like under ideal conditions, what works the best? I think there's a lot of literature showing carbohydrate restriction for people with obesity and metabolic syndrome can be tremendously beneficial. Weight loss, fat loss, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular health. But effectiveness is, well, how well does it really work in the real world? And I don't presume to know an individual circumstance. So if there is someone who is not going to be able to restrict carbohydrates for whatever reason, habitual, um, you know, uh, cultural, financial, circumstantial, if it's not going to work for them, then they shouldn't crucify themselves trying to get there. Um, I do think generally sugar restriction, sugar diet be damned, is helpful. So I would say the place to start is getting rid of sweets in the diet. Um, processed sweets, especially really the biggest lever you can pull is eating a mostly whole foods diet. I don't think it matters if you skew more plant-based or more animal-based, if you're eating, you know, eggs and salmon for breakfast, or if you want like, you know, an avocado and some tempeh, I, I really kind of agnostic it depends on your preference. Uh, but I do think getting rid of sugar and processed foods as a heuristic, uh, as a guideline is the single biggest lever you can pull. Um, I say this, and as I say it, I'm keenly aware of ways in which some of my messaging might even seem hypocritical on this because there are times when I want to speak in, in the form of heuristics and generalities because I think it resonates with people, but I also want people to appreciate there are always exceptions. The sugar diet conversation we had earlier today was an exception. Even when I say don't eat processed foods, it's like, well, what is processing really? Are processed foods per se bad? And the answer to that is technically no. But if you want the simple guidelines, for most people, most of the time, getting rid of foods with labels that are processed is going to do better. And it's generally not going to do harm. Um, so I think starting there and then knowing, and the reason I bring this up is knowing that your approach isn't locked in. It can change. It can adapt. So you might have a phase for a year or two where you don't eat any sweets. And then maybe you start toying with keto baking or very particular convenient processed foods that are well formulated. And if you engage in the education journey, in the metabolic health journey, if people are listening thus far to me rambling that they're already doing that, um, they will learn tools, tips, and techniques that will kind of advance them from novice level to intermediate and to advanced. And so um, I think that's all our goal here as a uh, uh, science communicators, uh, science conversators, and uh, just to teach people so they can figure out what works in their own life. Looking at your N of 1, inflammatory bowel disease. I'm just giving a little bit of pushback on that last statement you shared there about cutting out sugars and processed foods. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree, though, somebody in that boat, metabolically unhealthy, having a health challenge like that, that that wouldn't have been or wouldn't be at this point near enough to keep you in remission? You're 100% right. Um, so that is a good counterpoint. It depends what you're trying to treat. I guess I had in my mind when you posed the question, just like run-of-the-mill obesity um, in which you don't need uh, ketosis. I would say for certain conditions, ketogenic diets are therapeutic. And when I say ketogenic diets, I mean not just low carb, but you are in ketosis. That was true for me. Uh, if somebody has schizophrenia, depression, maybe certain autoimmune conditions, circulating ketone bodies from going very low carb might be therapeutic. So to your point, extreme diets can be beneficial in extreme circumstances. I think people should appreciate it's not necessarily an all or nothing. However, if you're dealing with something that's quite extreme, you might have to go pretty far to heal it. I did. Uh, I had tried a lot of like, quote, healthy eating patterns, whole food eating patterns, and they didn't work for me. You're 100% right. And it wasn't until I got to the extreme point 
of a ketogenic diet, quote unquote extreme, that's something to click. So don't be afraid of that either. I just opened up the, I guess, lower friction uh, concept first. But if that's not working for you, it doesn't mean that nothing will. You're right. It means you might just need to go a little bit farther. The challenge, I think, with our health as a whole today in the West is that the number is over 90% right now that are metabolically unhealthy. Yeah. And we're in a position now where the norm is for somebody to be overweight. Maybe I'm just, again, at this point, throwing out numbers, but 30, 50 pounds, that's not uncommon. And to me, if you're at that point, that means something major has gone wrong. And if I'm in your shoes, I'm wanting to know what the biggest levers to pull are. And that's why I want to be a bit more radical pushing back here because I feel like as a whole, our population right now is so sick and we've accepted sickness as the norm. And I want people not just to put one toe in and not get the results because this is so in our control from the people I've talked to, yourself included. Like we have so much control here and I want people to have the information they need to give this their all and to actually cause the changes that are going to change their lives. So I think it's about how do you, how do you inspire that change? Because I agree. I think most people are capable of incredible change and they don't realize it. Now, from my limited personal and clinical experience, one thing I have learned is you can't force it down someone's throat. The best way to do it is probably lead by example and plant the seeds. So as much as sometimes I see someone and like you, I want so badly for them to be healthy and I want them to just jump in head first, you know, no waiting in because I know if they do that and they stick with it, they're going to have results. However, I also know that if I tell them to do that, if I instruct them to do that, they will never do it. And you can't want it more than the patient. So the best thing you can do is provide people information and lead by example. So at the same time, I'm saying, look, you don't need to go whole hog. I'm also saying, well, this is what I lived. I did go whole hog and I needed that. And people can draw from that what they will. Um, so I think it's just about like how you communicate to people where they are. And that's kind of the art of, sometimes the art of medicine, but I guess the art of being a caring human being, like seeing the person in front of you, figuring out what's going to be productive to tell them uh, versus like what you maybe internally want to be screaming at them because you know what's best for them or think you know what's best for them. So I, I think being very conscious about like what is productive messaging to the person or the audience in front of you. And sometimes softer voices are stronger. Um, and sometimes you just have to be like, no, fuck it, go whole hog and, you know, go extreme carnivore for a reset. And then people realize, wow, this works and my life is transformed. It differs for different people. Um, you know, are you a cold turkey person? Are you a weighed in person? There's no right way. It's about like genuinely knowing yourself and just being committed to the journey, being committed to the process of saying, I'm going to try something honestly and openly. And then I evaluate, did it work for the outcome I care about? And if it didn't, then I'm not going to say I give up. I'm going to say, why didn't it work? What am I going to try next? And keep trying that. And you might find the extreme thing is best for you and makes you the happiest. You might. I did. And part of this extreme thing is that what we're talking about here when we say carnivore, ketogenic, they're extreme compared to what the norm is. And the yeah. norm right now is broken. Oh, yeah. And what I'm trying to do with this part of the conversation is just show people what that extreme is on one end so they know what's possible to attempt. And depending how broken you are, how committed you are, there is this path and Nick's taken it and continues to take it to put his condition in remission. And because it looks radical as you're seeing or hearing this right now, society right now is broken and, and we don't want to look at that as being normal because hopefully conversations yeah. like this can create a new normal and people can see a different path. That's the mission creating a new normal. It's a big mission. 
Um, we'll see. I, I do see headwind um, for this movement, metabolic health movement, you could say. I think there's at least a growing cohort uh, who are trying to define a new normal as being metabolically healthy, uh, not as YOLOing your way through your diet and life, which you're right, that is the new normal and it's entirely dysfunctional. It is dysfunctional what we feed patients in hospitals, what we feed children in schools. It's dysfunctional that we bribe for immunization with free donuts and burgers and french fries. Um, It's dysfunctional that like sugary breakfast cereal is normal and marketed to kids. There's so many things that are dysfunctional. Um, Yeah, and on the individual level, if you have the power and confidence in your social circles to say, just because I'm going to get pressure to do this and just because society says this is normal, it's not the way I need to behave. That's fantastic. Uh, I admire people with that courage. It took me, well, let's say it took an extreme circumstance for me to have that mind shift because it's still awkward. I'll tell you, I'm a 29 year old guy. My social circle is not keto. Uh, most of them don't know my backstory. So if I go out, I'm not going to give them my whole backstory about like horrible blood diarrhea and being hospitalized. I'm just not drinking and I'm generally not eating or at least not eating carbs. And you're, when you're with a pack of 20 year olds, that raises eyebrows, um, especially when you're lean and healthy on the outside. So I won't shy away from the fact that those situations are awkward. They're uncomfortable. They continue to be. But I just make the decision that I know is best for me. And I will tell you every day it's still hard. It's just very clear to me what the right decision is for me. And I think being a grown adult is just learning how to make the hard decisions and, you know, daily lifestyle decisions made consciously is in that cluster. Uh, So I won't tell people what's right or wrong for them, but I think being aware of that and that you're not alone, if you want to try something that appears extreme, maybe that's helpful. The nice thing is a lot of online communities that people can now join to feel supported. I agree about that piece, not telling people what's right or wrong. It's just people in general haven't had the opportunity to see this other path. Yeah. And people like me and you are bringing a different conversation forth and showing a different route if people choose to take it. Yeah. You will be supported by Jesse, by me, by our community. You don't need to go with what's societally normal because societally normal right now results in normal health outcomes and normal health outcomes are over 90% metabolically unhealthy. For somebody right now, metabolically unhealthy, overweight, no energy, saying, I'm ready to make a change, would you agree with me that diet, if all they have the bandwidth for right now is to make one shift, would you agree diet is the place to kick off? Yeah. Diet's a low-hanging fruit, no pun intended. Uh, Exercise is great. Sleep is definitely important. Don't get two hours of sleep a night, but diet's number one. And for you along your journey and from what you've seen in the research, what other modalities, levers can you propose for people when they have the bandwidth to take that on besides diet? I think all these things feed into one another. Um, I do think that getting your sleep in order is key. It just provides you with energy. It balances your hormones, uh, improves your mood. So as much as possible, and you know, the sleep hygiene tips are pretty basic, dark, cool room, wind down before bed, try not to get bright light, especially blue light in your eyes at night, sort of thing. Um, people differ. If you can be getting seven hours, I think that's for most people pretty good. Um, sleep is definitely my Achilles heel and where I need to work. Sleep and then exercise and have it be something that you enjoy. If you're starting your journey, it doesn't need to be like an hour concerted at the gym per day. Uh, Just increase your activity. Find whatever lever you need to do to make that happen. If it's, you know, counting your steps and trying to get 10,000 a day, great. If it's spending two days doing cardio of some form and then two days doing resistance training, great. I think more important than the actual exercise and activity is the momentum and the consistency. Make it part of your routine. You can always tweak the details later about what exactly you're doing, but when You go through your week or go through your day and it's just habit. We don't even have to think about it because you're just going to do it. If you just get up and go to the gym, there's no question. There's no willpower you need to exert because it's just part of your routine. That's a superpower. 
And then you can tweak the details later. So I don't care about the beginning, you know, how many calories you're burning, what your lifts are relative to your body weight. It's just doing it. And once you build that habit, then you can iterate. So sleep, exercise, and then of course, most of all, diet. If you enjoyed that clip, you're gonna wanna head over here and catch the full episode. I'll see you over there. Mark Bell, some of you might know him, started the sugar diet. He's a big time influencer, historically low carb keto. I ended up losing a lot of weight doing low carb keto and he started posting about the sugar diet. He's saying he's losing fat.